Hello, welcome to the Vanilla Stack News today with Vanilla Stack maintainer Jeff. Last week there was a new release of the Vanilla Stack um, installer. Please tell us about that. Hi, Frederica. Thanks for inviting me first. And yeah, it's a pleasure to talk about Vanilla Stack in the current. Um, yeah, currently, because it is actually we finally did it. We achieved the release. There were many things happening in the past around two to three weeks. Me and uh, the development team um, stood up and we tried to finally find a stable solution for our two development branches, means um, the Ansible part and um, the installer part. And we achieved it. We split the project into two, maybe in the future, a little bit more projects so that um, the Ansible parts for all of our already well-knowing base of Ansible users is completely split now from the installer part. So um, that me and the development team, when we try to maintain the installer, we are loosely coupled <laughs> teams so that we can develop both projects um, or we are not forced to um, develop both projects in the same manner or in the same way. So that's one big step we took in the past. Um, with that step, we decided uh, to drop support at least on the installer basis for um, certain parts like uh, Cloud Foundry and OpenStack. Don't be surprised, there will be support for OpenStack and Cloud Foundry as well. It's just that uh, Cloud Foundry in the current stage is not suitable in a way we have anticipated to deploy it. So we are currently planning on a additional installer, which is specifically meant to deploy um, OpenStack and vanilla stack on top of the stack. Um, because the other way around, which we try to achieve because in our opinion, it was maybe an easier solution, but it wasn't in the end. Um, so basically our approach has died out um, due to recent changes on OpenStack and Kubernetes. And uh, in order to be um, applied with the uh, Kubernetes API and future versions and future release of Kubernetes, we were forced to drop the support for now and release it on um, on the other way. So basically we will deploy still OpenStack and vanilla stack on top of it, but it will be handled in a different projects where we can actually anticipate a little bit more on the needs of OpenStack. And on the other way, uh, on the other hand, sorry, <laughs> um, we have finally um, implemented um, some sort of um, management solution. We first planned to completely build it on our own, but um, found it not only difficult, but with the approach we had, it would take just so much more time. And um, we recently stumbled upon the new release of Stratos and it looked pretty awesome. And um, it had all the feature sets we uh, have tried to implement and we decided on the spot that maybe it is a, a little bit of a better approach to just implement Stratos as it supports multi-tenancy, uh, multi-cloud uh, um, and all the necessary application deployment stuff. So it means um, it has an endpoint for your local Helm repositories uh, for your Kubernetes parts means if you have multiple clusters or multiple vanilla stacks, you can manage them through one vanilla stack in the end. Um, it has support for monitoring logging endpoints. So you have one solution out of the box and we spent um, the last two to three weeks to actually get this deployment working because the newest release it is documented, but not in a way where you can implement it out of the box in an easy way. So um, we had to fight with certain issues like um, our approach is that we have one 
uh, identity provider um, in our system. It means we're currently using Keycloak for, for this regard. What it means in the end is that you have one user management solution. Um, so from an ops or DevOps perspective, it is way easier to approach this on one specific tool instead of um, managing users on, on other services as well. So if you have your logging access and you have a team um, who, whose um, workflow only is to have uh, permissions to access logging or monitoring, you can do it. Um, um, you can set specific groups in Keycloak and add those users to those specific groups. Um, you can give them access to the, um, the uh, Stratos maintaining tool. And this is easily managed uh, inside Kubernetes, um, not inside Kubernetes, sorry, inside Keycloak. And so for the most part, we fought with uh, the original integrated single sign-on system, um, which is provided by Cloud Foundry, means uh, they, have, they have their own development called um, UAA. I think it was uh, an acronym for user authentication and something. <laughs> I don't really know. The problem is that tool is a little bit tricky to handle. And we had to put it up in a way that it can handle user federation. And yeah, after long nights, <laughs> two weeks ago, um, Kim and I finally had a breaking Eureka moment and uh, found out that our approach now works. Yeah, and we finally released a version, I think it is version 1.8.1, but um, the reason because uh, or the reason why we didn't name it version two because obviously it is actually version two right now is um, that we have still some minor issues some minor tweaks to do um, it is not an issue on on Kubernetes part or how the deployment works but they are there's some polish needs to be done let's call it this way so um, when this polish is actually applied and uh, well suited and everyone uh, from the development team is finally happy um, with the solution we will release it at version two but uh, for early onboarders for users who are interested they can already approach this um, project in a current state um, like i mentioned earlier the installer is now separated from the ansible part so if you are not completely familiar with, with Ansible or want just an easy solution to deploy your Kubernetes, um, you should approach it through our GitHub link to the vanilla installer. There should be, or there is a way um, that you only have to run your uh, Docker image and start your deployment right away or build a, uh, build a Docker image on your own machine whatever suits uh, suits your approach, um, you can take it. And if you're more suited to Plansible, you want uh, some finer tweakings before even the deployment is done, then you can approach it through the uh, vanilla stack um, repository. It is still the same. Um, I think, Friedrike, you will forward the links to the audience as well. Of course. Yeah, and that's basically the the great news from now we have achieved the release <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> yeah. so the next steps are to uh, fix these uh, mini mini issues yeah they are, they are not really issues this is more like like i try to to explain it is really more of a polish it is we want to tweak the appearance of uh, of the stratos tool a little bit there are um, certain things you currently are forced to deploy manually um, as soon as the vanilla stack is reachable. And uh, we want to also automate those deployments by a little bit tricky because it doesn't work out of the box. There is not a real API definition from um, Stratos as tool. And so currently we try to gather enough information to have at least a workaround for the time being that the documentation on 
um, Cloud Foundry's part is uh, still in the working or in the making. Um, so it is not really an issue. It is, like I said, it's fine tweaking at the end just to make it really work like it has to work. And um, yeah, next steps, um, you mentioned it already. Um, there are obviously still features open. Um, there are features we actually aimed at uh, from the get-go, like uh, features uh, or features like uh, maintaining your um, vanilla stack means CRUD operation on, um, on the vanilla stack itself means um, to extend your vanilla stack or to reduce nodes means um, extend your worker pool, extend your master pool or reduce um, those planes as well. Those are features which are currently not implemented in, in an automated way, um, but we are aiming to do this. And now as we use um, Stratos as management system, we will divide this approach in a different manner. So um, we will, or we are going to implement this uh, on an operator level. So it means um, even though you don't like your eyes because those people exist, we have our CLI ninjas. And um, even for those guys, we will implement a feature um, through custom resource definitions. You can then manage and maintain your vanilla stack as well. But this is currently just future talk. Um, it is a, a step which I'm currently planning on uh, how we want to approach it. And um, as soon as we have openings in our busy day life, <laughs> we will force those tasks in. So yeah. Okay. Any more questions? <laughs> just one. Um, who, if if you could wish, wish who will join the community and uh, the contributor group? Which skills do you wish for your for the vanilla stack? Oof, that's a really hard question. So, um, I mean, skill wise. Um, it's not like you have to be professional on many manners because um, everyone from our development department started somewhere. So working with code is, um, yeah, it's, so skill requirements are not really necessary. So if, if you have uh, certain skill requirements are not necessary. So you have to have a basic understanding uh, what uh, tools do what. So. There is, you need a basic concept of um, what Kubernetes is, how it works, how Ansible works, uh, as it is the baseline um, for our automated deployment process. Um, from the development perspective, uh, for instance, in regard to operators or um, our installer, um, it is, the installer itself is currently written in, in JavaScript, so, it should be a more or less easy to go language. So it is really um, newbie friendly, if you want to call it that way. So it is language which, um, which you can get um, an easy going into. And um, from the operator perspective, it will be written in Go. So um, if you look at it from the perspective of um, development or community uh, members who want to um, participate in, in, in the development of those operators, Go would be the base necessity in this case. Or on the other hand, as I mentioned beforehand, um, most of the parts, most of the deployment parts are Ansible. So if you're familiar with Ansible or um, with Kubernetes custom resource definitions, you're highly welcome. It's not rocket science, but uh, <laughs> you have to have at least a basic understanding on, on those tasks. Um, for the rest of it, um, we have, this is also um, something new. I don't know if he officially mentioned it. Um, we opened up uh, Rocket Chat um, as it was already requested by the community. Um, I mean, they asked for Slack, but as we want to go with open source, we decided to go with Rocket Chat. So there is a Rocket Chat for us, 
for the community to ask questions, to raise questions more or less, or to um, communicate with the development team from Cloudical. So yeah. So maybe we can share the, the link as well. Sure. I will okay. share it with you and hopefully you will forward it to the community. <laughs> of course. <laughs> So thank you for your time and the, the great insights. You're welcome. And um, it was a pleasure. Yeah, for me too. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Federico. Bye.